like watching the behind the scenes of most of their movies, mm. you start to pick up on the way that they think is not normal. It's not like an average way of thinking at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they definitely may come across a little weird. Artists probably do all the time to like the average person, but like that's why I want to do stuff like this because if I'm talking to more creatives, I don't know that one the average person is gonna listen. Two, we have a chance to actually talk amongst ourselves because we're the dreamers you know like you we have this whole entire world set in our minds and we're like okay how can i navigate to that world like mm -hmm. how can i get there how can i make this world a reality and i feel like creatives they just operate differently because i'll be like in business school and you know we do the introduction thing and everyone's like oh like What's your name? What's your passion? Like, what do you do? A lot of people be like, hi, like, I'm Karen, and I'm in real estate, and I just, you know, all this stuff. And I'll be here like, hi, my name is Kaylee, and I'm a singer-songwriter, and I want to go on tour. And everyone just looks at me like, mm. <laughs> like, this girl has to be kidding. Like, that's what I went through the entire experience in college, like, in business school, because it's not realistic it's mm. not like a reality in their minds True. and that's another thing a lot of people have this stereotype like oh you're a singer oh okay but like they think oh like mm, a singer with no like a regular singer but then for some reason every time when i show them my stuff they're like oh that kind mm. of singer like you're actually good mm. I don't know. I get that every time. What do you think the What do you think is like the worst stigmatism that that comes with just like the average person, you know, perspective of when someone says like, "Oh, I'm an artist. I'm a singer." Like, what do you think where where do you think that wall comes from? Like, where do you think that assumption just like why does that assumption hit them? I guess. What do you think? I think about this a lot, actually. I think I don't know. I try to figure it out daily, especially. Oh, I always do because oh. just grow, me too. Like growing up, telling people like I remember did beats. You know, I still do them, but I don't have the time. But it's still like telling my my classmates like, oh, I want to make beats one day. I want to be a producer. And everyone just like goes off the rails. <laughs> like, you know, it's like what? It's like what? How does that seem so like either far fetched or just like not? I guess appealing. So I guess in in your in your words, why do you think that wall usually hits people so hard when you tell them like I'm a singer songwriter and I want to go on tour? I think it's because one societal norms. That's outside of the societal norms. Like people are thinking about okay, how can I get a job that's going to give me money right away? And how can I get a house and kids? And that's the life that they want to pursue. Mm. Two, I think it's also like a self-reflective thing. Like I think that when people, <laughs> when you tell people and you believe in yourself so much, you're willing to give the world, you're willing to fight for this dream and make it come to a reality I think that's hard for people to believe because they themselves can't do it or they limit themselves. Mm -hmm. I feel like people tell you things that they can't do, but just because they can't do it doesn't can't mean you, you it. can't do it. Yeah. And that's why they always like want to limit you. They're like, you can't do that. It, it's not going to happen because that's hard for them to believe that like it can become a reality. Mm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I do. And that what, I was, what you made me think of was the unfortunate side of knowing that you want to become a, a artist, singer, songwriter, even just a basic creative. Yeah. Until you literally reach or get close to where you know you want to be, that's when people start believing. Yes. And I hate that I was like yes. that. But just like you, you know that you have to go through this whole journey just for people to eventually start to see what you already knew 
Right. And I hate it. I hate how that's how it is. But you know that one, of course, when you start, you can't go back. Because after, you, say, if you like give up in the middle. Yep. You already know people. Oh, I didn't oh, work. Yeah. Blah, 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 I knew whatever. it wasn't gonna work. You know, yeah. yeah. It's like it's it's the unfortunate part that I know we say like those people or just the people that don't want to be creative, so understand the creative mindset. I don't think they know that same kind of drive is in. You know, yeah. artists like the same exact drive just to get to where they want to be in life. Like they have that. You have that image of yourself. Yes. Of where you know where you want to be, where you want to go, what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And they, like, I think you, hey, you perfectly, you said it perfect. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, it's harder for them to envision it. Whoa, you said it perfect. Hold on. And he's like, oh, you said it perfect. I didn't even realize what just happened. That's, right, like, on. such an Whoa. eye-opening that moment. That was crazy. I just, okay. because I needed that. No, for real. That's that's exactly I why. I was reading this book, um, and it's called The Answer. You would love this book. What's it about? It is about, and it changed my life completely. My dad actually recommended this book to me. And it's basically about following your dreams. And I guess, like, this author in particular, like, him and his wife have they've literally lost their house before but at the same time they've done everything they've ever wanted to do like mm-hmm. be on a, a radio station or a tv show or like write a book or travel or you know and they talked about how they did that like how they made their visions become a reality and what they did was they had the first rule is like envisioning yourself at wherever you want to be and actually once you do that your mind has this thing called the irs system or something like that it's like um i'm not sure if that's the one but it's like basically like your own little gps in your mind Mm -hmm. and your mind officially gathers all the information it can to navigate you to like that destination and then before you know it like it'll highlight things that you didn't notice. Kind of like, you know when you see your car on the road and you're like, oh, that's my car. Like your mind picks up on that. But before, you didn't know. Mm -hmm. So that's how, you know, he talks about that's how your mind works. Like he picks up on, it picks up on things that get you to that destination. And that's how their world came to life. Basically... In the book, you know, that I was reading, they were talking about, like, different levels that you're going to face, like, following your dream. And, you know, what? maybe it was the IRS or... Oh, it was called the Reticular Activation System. Okay. Basically, that is your GPS that will get you to where you want to be. Can you say it again? Rick, Rick t- yeah, Reticular Activation System. Okay. Or something. So, RAS or... R-I-S, mm-hmm. or something like that. But basically, your inner GPS, that will get you exactly where you, where you need to be, you know, what roads you should take, the people that you should meet. Like, it just, it pops up everywhere. And, you know, once you're focused on that, only I feel like only successful people can do that. Like, they focus on that one thing. Um you're going to have obstacles. And one of those obstacles is they like mention not just like life troubles, like, but <laughs> people. People are like the biggest obstacle because people are gonna, your family members, your friends, your, just everyone closest to you that you thought would be on your side is like actually not. And so I have this vivid picture in my mind in the book where it's like, that here's you, right? And here's like a whole field, like here's your path, this is you. And the whole, like you just see um, someone with a sledgehammer, another person with <laughs> a freaking, like all kinds of weapons and like they're just willing <laughs> to like throw, <laughs> <laughs> like throw it at you. 
<laughs> okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, you're I trying get, okay, to like go it. through your journey, <laughs> but like... you're gonna have like things thrown at you, like God. you know, <laughs> just trying to like hit you in every detail. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like a bit of a description of how it is being an artist because like everyone even and then it's not just people but it's your own self that you are fighting um, like oh you are fighting gosh. your doubts yes. you're fighting like your money situation and even yourself like that's mm -hmm. the biggest battle i feel like you're, like you're so constantly bad. your yeah. biggest critic is mm -hmm. just so bad mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's what I meant with the book. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, see, the first you gave the description, I was like sledgehammer. Look at all the shoes. It's so hard. It's so hard. Um, would you say that with your creative process, in your journey of being a singer songwriter, the more that the better that you become being an artist singer songwriter. I know that as a creative, you could definitely be your biggest critic. Yes. How does that get, like, how does it feel harder to get past that self-critique hump sometimes? Knowing that you know, like, the finer details of, like, you're probably ear trained. You know what you want with, like, instruments and how they're supposed to sound, like, decibels, like, all those different technical things that, um, you know, the better that either producer gets a singer songwriter or artist whoever they are like the musical industry how hard is it to sometimes just let yourself like lay back and just be like okay i'm finished with this song instead of being like i want to speak this one more thing and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no it's unspeakable i mean you know you know out of all people like i'm very um critical with myself and i take my time i think that's what really differentiates me from other artists is like I feel like artists are posting all the time and kudos to them because like I don't know how they do it I wish I had the time to like just make music like that but for me I really like take my time because every single you know every single detail is critical it's like a painting you know there, there's different artists there's a splatter paint artist and then there's those artists that like they make m these mountains and valleys mm -hmm. and you know all by like, like intricate like this. yes the little things like the intricate things that make the bigger picture so i feel like i'm that kind of artist mm -hmm. and but what i want my audience and my viewers to know is that every time that i release something it's gonna be something like beautiful and mind-blowing because it's it's really thought out and you know like a lot mm -hmm. of time has been put into it you know yes so i guess <laughs> the more experience that i get the more nitpicky i guess nitpicky, nitpicky is detailed yeah. detailed especially we'll with, detailed yeah yeah <laughs> especially with pitch and like you know and you know when we filmed the music video, I was just like, no, no, like, it should be this way, you know, I'm very, yeah. and that's kind of a bad thing, because then you don't want to give control to many people. That's something I struggle with. Not necessarily. I mean, like, I I know more than anybody being and wanting to be, like, a film director, when you have a certain vision for something that you're either recording, you're either musically recording, like, and it doesn't come out the same way that you literally envisioned it. And now, like, of course, it's the skill of just knowing what you want next, knowing how to tweak something, either, like, reverb, compression, you know, whatever it is in the, in the music sense. Mm -hmm. But with video, like, I just, I had a crazy flashback of just when I was a kid where um, Transformers was the very first, like, movie I literally remember that I was so fascinated by because um, the CGI in it was insane for the time, 2007. Yeah. So watching it as a kid, I'm looking at it like, that's like so freaking cool, you know, like I don't even know where to start with visual effects. But now you take like an iPhone and you go outside and you realize like, this is not the same quality. It's like, 
you know like, yeah so of course like that's what the uh like, the curiosity starts to form it's like how how do you get the same quality as like you know the movies i guess but then when you get there when you realize like okay anyone with maybe like a couple thousand dollar camera can be on the big screen but now you need visual effects you need color grading you need you know, like all these different tools to us like oh my goodness like for the, just the time sake being 2007 michael bay transformers you know but people will watch a movie like that these days that don't know how to appreciate the time the mm -hmm. detail you know what yeah. i'm saying everything that was inside of it just be like i didn't like it or they maybe didn't like it because it wasn't entertaining to them and that like how, how did do, does that make you feel any kind of way i guess or someone that if it was someone that was an artist let me think of a better question <laughs> Cause I know, I know for me, I know sometimes where my community is, if I were to show somebody something and maybe they watch it for like 10 seconds, or maybe they miss most of the details, you know, that you know that you probably spent hours on yeah. just for someone to appreciate it. How does that make you want to be a better artist or how, how do you fight with that? knowing that sometimes there are details that you may put in your songs or your music or your instrumentals mm -hmm. that you know or that you would think in the process of it like this is going to be appreciated does mm -hmm. it make you want to go harder how does, how does it make you feel um it depends what you're what you're trying to aim for you know like who are you trying to What's a better word? Who are you trying to please? Mm. You, just, you just came up with a whole music video in seconds. That's a gift. Because some people can't or can't not imagine it. Some people cannot just daydream or simply think about what they want anything to look like or what they want their life to look like. Anything. Like So I just, I think that is what makes me sad sometimes. Is that the gift of imagination is so devalued hugely i feel like kids don't have that nowadays and that is that's like the scariest yeah. part the scariest part so i think i had a phone when i was like 14. me too <laughs> <laughs> the, my parents were like you don't need a phone yeah, I, had the, I had the iphone 4 i think it was like uh, it was like the blockier one yes <laughs> but just i still knew like I don't know, man. I think it was just the fun of one going to sleep and you don't have like a device, I guess. Yeah. All I would do is daydream before I go to bed. That's, that's what would help me go to sleep, daydreaming. Mm. So then sometimes I would be dreaming and I wouldn't know I'd be asleep. That's how I had the best dreams. Mm -hmm. So I would just, I would, and Spider-Man was my favorite movie back then, Spider-Man Spider and Transformers. So I would just daydream all freaking night about it. And wake up like the happiest kid ever. That was mainly like my childhood. Go to sleep, daydream, wait for my friends to get home because I was homeschooled for <laughs> until uh, eighth grade. Mm. But then we're outside, you know, you're playing. Kids don't really play outside that much anymore. Go back inside, probably watch movies, watch soccer games, basketball, you know what I'm saying? Watch the TV show with the family, go to bed, daydream. So all I'm doing is like, Whatever I see on like TV, whatever I talk about with my friends, I would either have to imagine like what school was like because I was homeschooled, mm -hmm. or what. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like kids are a generation. We uh, we use our imagination a lot. And I think that's what they're lacking, like mm. these kids nowadays, because they don't use toys. Like we use mm. toys for everything, and I mean, I'm not raising my kids that way. I'm literally gonna like play with them, like yeah. play, play. Did you have a favorite toy growing up? My sister and I had toys, and it wasn't like Lego. Like what we would do is we would assemble a whole world of our own and I think that's where like my creativity comes from because we'd like get different houses you know and we put them in rows like like this like it's a giant neighborhood 
and they even had like a mayor spot and everyone lived in their houses mm -hmm. and we just built this whole world with these characters and we would spend like weeks just coming up with stories and playing and like we'll be like we'll be right back yeah. <laughs> and we would go eat dinner and then we'd come back and like oh. we plan be like okay tomorrow they're gonna do this and they're gonna go That's seek cool. out a dragon and like we just build these crazy scenarios you know that's cool and that kelsey and i like she's always been my best friend you know we did everything together like she's always been the tough cookie yeah. and i would have friends over like we meet I'm somebody because i know her i know <laughs> she was always like that though and she was always like always protecting me you know i would always be like hi and like so nice and be like <laughs> <laughs> in front of me and yeah kelsey kelsey's always been like that so for as long as i remember she's always been like my little security guard mm -hmm. you know and we my whole childhood was just based on like that world that we created for each other and it's so sad to think about now because did it have a name no Dang. It didn't have a name. We just we played doll. That, that's how. Yeah. That's what we called it. Was it almost like Sims? You know how like you just have like you you know you can create all these different places and you have all these different like characters and they usually have like scenarios and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was like that actually. Have you never <laughs> heard of Sims or? Oh yeah, uh, like but I've never played. Okay, okay, yeah. We just had like in this world it wasn't just normal people like dogs can talk and fairies were alive and there was even like w different worlds within that world like or up on top of Kelsey's bed mm. was fairyland and See, I almost laughed only because <laughs> just because you did you, that too? No, no 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 yeah I almost <laughs> laughed because it caught me so off guard you said you said dogs can talk. I was like, that does does sound fun. And you said like fairies, the fairies. What did you say about the fairies? Fairyland. You said you said like fairies were alive or something like that. <laughs> that caught me off guard. This is the way that it sounded. But like, I think that's what, like that's what I miss is yeah. that it, anything was literally possible. And one, I kid you not, I kid you not, this is the very thing that I know about like movie industries, like the animation industries. They thrive off of it. They yeah. thrive off of it. Because you you just said something that sounded to the average person. Either sounds dumb, stupid, whatever. But look, do they not have a movie called Pets? Yeah. Come on now, of dogs can talk. Now they have they have all these other movies nowadays about dogs talking. They definitely have movies where fairies are alive, like Shrek. You know what I mean? Like different different things that I guess we all grew up on with uh, either childhood movies, Disney movies, but just the fact that those industries know for a fact imagination is something that everyone definitely has. But it's they lacking. Have it. They're lack. Like I don't. It's lacking. Oh. The movies, they're not even as good anymore. You think so? <laughs> even like kids' like, movies or all movies. Hmm. I've definitely seen some good movies. Like, that, The Greatest Showman was such a good movie. But that was years ago. I haven't, I haven't actually. <gasps> See, I think I, I I watched like half of it. To be real with you, surprisingly. I'm surprised. Musicals aren't my favorite. What? Isn't that insane? The fact that nice. I'm musically inclined, I like theatrics. And I don't even, I don't know what it is. I don't, I really don't want it. I don't know. It's so inspiring. What? In the Heights was my favorite, though. I didn't see that movie. You should watch it. I I think, because I'm not a big crier. Mm. The last couple of times that I probably cried was November. And the last time before that was 2018. <laughs> <laughs> it was so long ago. But, I'm, but, I, but uh, so I remember going to the movies to see In the Heights. Um, it, was at, it was at Studio Movie Grill. And I think it was one of my mom's friends from the high school that I went to. And so there, we have like a couple rows blocked off. And we're watching it. And I'm sitting in the chair like, am I really going to like this movie? Like, can I sit here for, I guess, like two hours and enjoy this musical? Starts and maybe like 
halfway through, I'm in tears. And I don't know why I'm in tears. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in tears. So I'm just listening to it, though, because the story was beautiful. Like, I think it was just a very heartfelt story because the characters were so realistic. It's, it doesn't take take place in like a very rich environment or whatever. I don't want to like spoil the movie, but it's called In the Heights because I think, I don't want to butcher the name. It was somewhere in New York. I don't want to spoil it, but I know that the scenery looks just like New York. And the main character, his name is like US Navy. I kid you not, that's his name. He was named after a boat because his like dad or granddad saw the boat. But is a Hispanic themed neighborhood, Hispanic themed cast, and the songs, like the songs in general, you know from a artist's perspective, you can hear the music, you can hear the different instruments. Mm. But I think something that the average person may not be able to feel or relate to instrumentals is how even instruments sound like they're saying something to us, I guess, in a way, at least to me, as a producer. Mm. I can hear, hmm, I've heard people describe it before like this, to where the same way that you may like cry with your voice or like maybe like whine when you're singing, mm. they can hear instruments do that too, in a way. Like the way that an instrument can talk, they can feel and hear it. So the way that the songs were, some songs, it just hit, it hit me different. And I remember I, there was one specific scene. I'm not going to spoil the movie again, but I'm just saying the grandma. When you watch, oh, <laughs> abuela. Like, <laughs> when, you, when you watch the movie for yourself. Oh, wait. I think I heard of that movie. Abuela, man. It is all Spanish, right? Yeah, like Puerto Ricans in New York, right? I want to watch I'm it. I'm so mad. Like, I'm still thinking about it. I remember I rem <laughs> my brother was... <laughs> I, think, I think my brother was next to me, and I was tearing up. So I was trying to turn. So he, couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't see me because I was like, I was like, why is it so sad, man? Yeah, I would look around at, um, like, film festival stuff, even just to go, just to, like, show face. Like, there was one that I just missed because of the, the funeral. You just the missed recording. it. No. Yeah. yeah. So I missed it, but that was the one with John Travolta was mm. there, and there's a rapper, his name's Quavo. Mm. And so that's why I also like going to Atlanta a lot, because if I just go to an Atlanta Hawks game, there's so many different people that are like just there, if yeah. you bump into them, or even if you just like strike a small conversation, you never know who you're going to talk to. They're like, oh yeah, like I work at like TBS. What? <laughs> you know, like they're just there to watch the game. Should we like re redo our conversations? There was one that I was like talking about. Was it the book? No, before the book, because I I talked about the book, and then I was like talking to you here. Remember? But I forgot the topic, and I was about to say something. You're like, man, I wish I got the film. Oh, oh, it was the question about um. You know what I'm talking about. Because <laughs> I remember I said, I know this too well, I think. Keep going. No, the the question asking about, like, do you get annoyed whenever people don't appreciate music? Yeah. And I was talking about... Who are you trying to please? Okay. So it's not about... At the end of the day, you got to ask yourself, who are you trying to please? You know, uh, when you're making music, you're doing it, basically, I do it for myself. I'm not thinking about anybody else, like, oh, somebody else would like this song. No, like, I'm genuinely speaking my heart. I'm expressing myself and my words, and, you know, it just comes out. And if they like it, they like it. But I'm just putting myself out there, and the right people will come. What is frustrating is when you spend hours and hours editing a video for content, right, because you're trying to find your audience, and then they watch like five to two seconds of it. And you're like, what the frick? I mm. thought this was really good. Yep. And so what I was like explaining earlier was with the whole TikTok thing. Mm. Like I blew up on TikTok, 70K, 3,000 followers. I'm like, this is it. Like, and I started, I kept grinding, but then all the people that were following me, they were all guys, first of all. Oh. So they all like, I was getting the wrong audience. Two, second of all, it 
started to become meaningless. Like I hated, I hated doing them because one, I was looking at the, the retention rate. Mm. So I was like, okay, so in order to grow followers, I need to have at least like seven, eight seconds because that's how long they stay. So then like I would sing just a little melody and that was it. And I remember you doing that on the piano. Yeah. But in reality, Naj, I hated it because I didn't feel like I was being authentic. I wasn't speaking my heart. I wasn't. I didn't really mean what I was singing, and I was just doing it for other people. And then that's when I just stopped. And people were like, "Where you go? What happened?" You know. And I started focusing on tiptoe and like promotion. And then, in reality, like out of three thousand people that followed me, only like fifteen less. Like five to fifteen people really cared about my song, mm, mm. And, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I was like, I don't want to make music for that. Like I just, that's what's annoying. For the, you don't want to make music for the aesthetic. For the aesthetic. You want to make it to be authentic. And and that's what I like about t- TikTok now because now they're like, no, we want authentic content Mm. we want we don't want you guys to shorten the content and make it less authentic and like no we want you to make for algorithm purposes yeah so now they're pushing out like one minute videos and i'm so glad because it's like it's like they caught you know (laughs) they caught something from slipping away Mm. you know what i'm saying like i feel like you know that passion and like authenticity was just slipping away because people you know were just swiping by and they were just looking for like short um what's short that word content? short form content but that short like you mean dopamine dopamine that short dopamine short. that makes them feel good i know the word you're talking about yeah boost of dopamine something like that i know what you mean yeah for like dose. five seconds and the then dose of dopamine mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm yeah yeah that's why i actually deleted tiktok a couple <laughs> a couple weeks ago because of that because yeah i mean i'm pretty sure everyone has found themselves doing it a couple times handful of times where you are scrolling just scrolling yeah and you know that what you're looking for is probably just like some like some sort of funny video whatever i know that i had the battle of telling myself like okay after this video like i'm gonna get off yeah. But you're already caught, and like the most of are like, you're just searching for more. Oh my goodness. You're like, one more, one more. No, but I, I feel you there. Also, especially on the, um, you know, like making content or just doing what you love for people. Mm. And I know that when I was making beats, it was the same thing. Like, I, I would make them to get subscribers because I just know that one, if you continue to post every single day, Yep. And it, it like the beat is good or whatever. People like it. Your subscribers will grow after mm-hmm. you reach a certain amount of subscribers. Then you can monetize and exactly like but have that whole age. Hey, mm. It's not fun anymore. And, and when you're you not, dread when you're doing it for people. You're when doing, you're doing it, for it for people. people. And that's like that's it, that's a fine line that that I'll battle with occasionally. Yeah. Because I know I'll watch. When I know that I'm making things for people, yeah. because my model will almost change. Yeah. Like I know, I know why I like to make content, or why I like to record things, or why I like to be in like a film-based workspace. I guess. Yeah. But I know for a fact the way that I post it, or how I post it, or how it's you know how it's packaged. If it's a 10-second video, it's a 50-second video. You're trying to be like quick. You know, eye catching and all that yes. stuff. Yes. Is there anything that you know that you do that will either make you like happy, enthusiastic, inspired in any sort of way? I uh, yeah, no, for sure. Like I feel like when I'm, it depends on my environment. I think mm. that's because everyone's different. For you, it's food. For it's me, <laughs> in order to create. Here's another thing though, like ever since I started YouTube in high school, I've always loved filmmaking too, and mm-hmm. like filming videos. And if you like go back, I actually have videos like I edit them and like I made them all myself. So 
I've always, even like when I post on Instagram and like blogs and stuff, I've always loved doing stuff like that. Like I've always wanted to entail my journey as an artist and share that with people. Um, but yeah, so the environment thing, like I have to be in a dark room. Like it has to be at night. And that's when I find the most inspiration, like for some reason. And I'm just like on the grind. But even during the day, I have to like force myself to work because that's the only time we can work. But if I could choose, it'd be at night. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. That yeah. is actually interesting. I um, I remember so my parents usually like call or FaceTime me at, before bed. Mm -hmm. So something, <laughs> something that I'm usually doing I'm probably just sitting in the dark because I know that during the day or like during the longer weeks or I'm usually on like, you know, like the little screen yeah, or just either on my phone, on my iPad, desktop, I usually don't want to look at anything. So usually sitting in the dark is very peaceful. Sitting in the yeah. dark while listening to music. So my parents will, <laughs> will call me. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, like I'm really <laughs> just chilling right now. But, you know, they, they may take it. A different way but I, I just know that same like when I'm sitting in the dark sometimes before bed that is a very dangerous thing to do only because if I get inspired now I'm up yeah it's, it's hard to go to sleep what I, I do sleep. too is like I will literally be half asleep and I'll just come up with this idea and yeah like this song Gotta idea. Write it down gotta lay something down exactly mm -hmm. so i'll literally get up and it's you know my room's dark and everything and i'm just like standing there with my phone and i do a voice memo <laughs> like la 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 and then i put it back down and like i'm going to sleep <laughs> <laughs> like randomly like i don't know that's actually kind of funny no because <laughs> I, I can imagine it it's, I'm I'm just thinking of what it may sound like from like other rooms in the house. Yeah. 